Okay, uh, still on the entrepreneurial series, okay? Uh, one of the things uh, when an entrepreneur has a dream, uh, some people move into the dream because it's a good idea and they end up doing it for years. Some people it's just something that they're good at. Uh, that's what I call the dilemma of the competent. I meet so many extremely competent people and they know that they could do damn near anything if they set their mind to it. And they just don't seem to be finding anything fun enough uh, to set their mind to it. So in my self-actualization class, that's what I look for. What is it that when you're doing it, your life works? What is it that when you're doing it, life is fun? You kind of forget yourself. You go out to higher states of awareness. And you can live there. So you get that or you have a good idea and you want to build a business around it. One of the things you're going to have to be, and we've talked about this, one is ruthless to your dream, to the outcome, to what you want for the dream. The other is persistent. Most times your dream isn't going to come overnight. Uh, we used to joke that one of these days I'm going to be an overnight success after 25 years of playing this game. Um, I have been a success. My business is a little bit slow right now. But uh, but what you have to look at is who wants to work with you and be persistent in letting people know what you want and where you're going with the team. If they don't know that, it's going to be tough for them unless they're in complete line, unless they know where you're going. Uh, I had a corporate client, and they had a steps to there were four or five steps to uh, a project. Right? One, two, three. And what we have people do is, is look at what's the weakest step in the link. Because some things just happen. She would go out on the road and bring clients in. And then they, they, her team had to follow these steps. Well, she sat down and I watched her and she put the five steps. She said, oh no, this one goes here, that one goes there. And here's step number six now. And we went into the meeting with her team, and she said, now everybody knows the team, the steps to a project. And I said, I don't think they can know that. And she stopped. She said, of course they all know that. I said, okay, then let's everybody just sit for a minute and write down the steps to a project. Write down the steps, and we'll get to the point of this in just a minute. But the reason that I thought that they couldn't know the steps was because she had just added a step. She just went through and said, oh, this is how it goes, this is how it goes, this, and they all know this, right? And we got several different versions of how to finish a project. Now, the interesting thing was they all knew what the weak link was. That was the valuable part anyway. But they also, when she pointed out these other areas that she just they said, oh, yeah, yeah, well, of course we have to do that, of course, of course. We. But then they all knew the steps to finalizing a project or working a project to its, its not completion because they were still doing it, uh, to where they could continue to work with the project. But they all then knew what the steps were, but they all identified the weakest link, the toughest part of the, of the project management list, so that they could go ahead and apply a lot of their intelligence to just that area. Once they saw the other two areas, I think it was two areas, and then boom, was this weak link area. And once they saw those two fall into place, then they could come together as a team, a cohesive team, to start creating greater levels of efficiency at that bottleneck, at where the greatest risk was to the project. So those are some of the things we look at. Have a fun day. www.micpeakperformance.com